I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Hey everybody, this is Jason Dean with the Joe Blow Movie Network. We all gotta start somewhere, and even the biggest actors did their time in low-budget slasher flicks. So let's count down our top 10 actors you didn't know were in horror movies. Number 10 is Mark Ruffalo in the 1994 demonic artifact movie Mirror Mirror 2 Raven Dance. The biggest claim to fame for this movie was that it starred Roddy McDowell, and it was just plain bad overall. This was just Mark's second film role overall and was so early in his career it's hard to believe. But apparently Mark Ruffalo had such a good time, they brought him back in Mirror Mirror 3, The Voyeur, a year later. And no, I'm not making that up. But tonight I'm hunting down old ghosts and demons. Here in a church. <laughs> this place and I, we got a long, long history together. Number nine is Katherine Heigl in a movie from 2001 called Valentine. She plays the first victim in this Halloween-style knockoff slasher movie and is out of the film within the first eight minutes. She had been acting for almost a decade before this movie in extremely low-budget stuff with little to no direction with her career. It wasn't until 2007 when she landed the role of Allison Scott in Knocked Up that she would finally become a household name. Even the biggest names got to start somewhere. George Clooney was acting as far back as 1982, mostly in TV series roles. Trying to break into film, he took a small walk-on role in the extremely low-budget horror flick Return to Horror High. A year later, in 1988, he took another slightly larger role in another low-budget horror sequel, Return of the Killer Tomatoes. I guess you gotta do what you gotta do to make it in Hollywood. It would be almost a decade later before he hit the big screen in From Dusk Till Dawn, and then later Later in Batman and Robin. Number seven is a fan favorite. It seems like everyone out there loves Paul Rudd. He can do no wrong, it seems. He was still struggling to break into the big time when he took the role of Tommy Doyle in 1995's Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. It's probably not the best resume builder when your first big film role is in the sixth entry into a relatively weak horror franchise. It would be the mid-2000s before he hit the big time in Anchorman and then The 40-Year-Old Virgin. I'm sorry, I, I don't know you, do I? I'm Tommy. Tommy Doyle. Number six is such a bizarre entry, I wasn't even sure what to make out of it myself. The movie is called Psycho Beach Party from the year 2000, but it was made to look like it was from the 60s. I was so confused. But then I realized it was a parody movie of the Gidget Surfing movies from that era, but mixed with modern day slasher horror movies. Amy Adams plays an over the top good girl role and ends up in this scene where her boyfriend accidentally rips off her bikini bottom, causing a fairly major wardrobe malfunction. Disgusting, perverted weirdo! And my advice to you is to straighten up, buckle down, and apply yourself like any decent Presbyterian! Number five is Lawrence Fishburne in what is arguably the best entry in the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. I never cared much for the Elm Street movies, but I always had a soft spot for Dream Warriors. To me, it always stood out in the same way that, say, Wrath of Khan was more than a Star Trek movie. I thought the idea of Dream Warriors could have been a totally awesome standalone movie that never needed to lean on its franchise roots to present itself favorably. You know, back to Fishburne, he's great here as always. Nothing but sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Shh. That's what keeps people alive. Joseph Gordon-Levitt has been acting for a very long time, since he was a kid. But even he wasn't immune to taking roles in large franchise horror movies. It's a small role to be sure, but he does make an impression as an actor on the rise in the movie Halloween H2O. I suppose he was in good company since he ended up sharing credits with Jamie Lee Curtis, Josh Hartnett, and LL Cool J for this flick. The film was a side project for Levitt during the middle of his run as Tommy from the hit TV show Third Rock from the Sun. All right, let's not anyone mess with me here. Jimmy been suspended five times this year already for getting a little crazy with this. All right? Okay. 
Number three is another huge name. It's Leonardo DiCaprio in, get this, Critters 3. I remember when these movies came out. They were meant to be a slightly darker version of Gremlins, but they never really got there. They did have a ton of sequels, and I guess Leo had to start somewhere, right? He's so unbelievably young in this movie, it's hard to even imagine who he is today compared to this role. It was literally his first time in a major film other than some minor television appearances. And look how far he has come today. Unreal. My mom died. Not like your dad. She died. But I bet you didn't wish for your mom to die. I just wish we could go back to this morning. At number one, it doesn't get much bigger than this. Tom Hanks did a lot of TV before his breakout roles in the 1984 movies Splash and Bachelor Party. But even before Bosom Buddies, he starred as a psychology major in the Halloween knockoff horror movie He Knows You're Alone. The movie is actually somewhat of a cult classic these days. For his very first time on film, Tom Hanks stands out and owns every scene he is in. And it just goes to prove some people are born to be actors. Oh, a good deductive game. Yes. I'm most interested in fear, the emotion of fear. For example, why after seeing Psycho were so many people afraid to take showers? Not me. I never saw the movie. You were afraid, right? You bet. Fear fascinates me. So there's our top 10 actors you didn't know were in horror movies. Tell us down below which one is your favorite. I'm Jason Dean for the Joe Blow Movie Network, and thanks for watching.